Yeah, I think one of my favorite things to hear, and again, it makes me feel like I'm doing my job right, is when someone says, they'll ask me like, is this story about me? And I flat out tell them like, yes. I mean, if you're connected to it, you're going through that in your life, you're feeling something from that, it's absolutely about you. And it's about me. I don't write about things that I just coach people on and um, will take their stories and turn them into something that sounds like self-help. I have felt these things in my life. I've worked through these things in my life. And another great one, Dave, is when people uh, tell me, you know, it was interesting, like, I played this for my kids or I played this, my husband, and I sat and listened to a story and we had a great conversation about this. And I'm in the belief, if you listen to your by yourself, that you'll have your own self conversation going um, probably after the story because you're in it and then you're looking at your life from the story. But I, I really, really love to hear when people have played them with someone else and listen to them and then it just, they unpack or open up a dialogue about it not because it's the story but because they're it's helping their life and it's helping them communicate differently or opening something up that maybe wasn't open before to make their relationship better with using the stories as an example hey everybody welcome to living the next chapter it's dave so happy to be back with you again. Uh, Mike James is with me today in this episode. Uh, MikeJamesNow.com is his website. Mike does audible stories that help with mindfulness, uh, meditation, finding your space, and just creating this beautiful soundtrack that you can just unplug for a moment in your busy day, whether that's driving, washing the dishes, going for a walk with your dog, uh, hitting the treadmill at the gym. Mike provides through his website, these masterpiece audio writings. that are just amazing. So we have Mike on the podcast, talk about his journey he shares some beautiful stories from his um, his journey, um, and as well, he provides us the opportunity to hear an entirety uh, one of his stories, and the story is called "Just." And in the middle of the podcast, we're going to play all of the all of "Just" for you, so you can get a sense of what it's like to hear something that Mike's made and produced. Great episode. We even touch on things around. Uh, the fact that Mike donates a portion of his sales from his website to uh, suicide prevention and what that means to him, and uh, we, he's such a great a great guest, uh, very creative, and um, a mastermind in how he pulls all of these together. There's music in the here. There's a story. There's sound. It just captures you, and so this is a very special episode. Of living the next chapter, something I've never thought I would ever have as far as a guest, but something that I'm really proud of and really happy that Mike had time today to record this with us and share his journey. So, living the next chapter presents to you Mike James, mikejamesnow.com. And uh, in, in the middle of this podcast, the story for you from Mike called Just right here on Living the Next Chapter. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Living the Next Chapter. I have something completely unique. So you're an audio listener right now. Uh, you're going to have a treat today. This is something that I've never, I never have done. I never thought was possible, but I've gone through and che checked out MikeJamesNow.com. Mike James is with us on the podcast today. Mike does audible stories that will take you somewhere. And not only are we going to talk about what Mike does, but today you actually get to experience what Mike does. And I'm a huge fan. Mike, nice to see you. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm great. I'm I uh, working hard and figuring out things in life. And um, 
you know, don't know what I'm doing like every other human on the planet, but pretty <laughs> grateful for not knowing what I, I had many years where I thought I knew what I was doing and I did. So amazing. So yeah, so mikejamesnow.com is the website. So everyone, you need to go there at some point uh, and just and do some research, do some background on Mike. Mike, um, tell me a little bit about this. You are doing something very creative. You are helping people to ground themselves, find a space for themselves, and you're doing it in a very unique way. Can you explain to me how you started with Audible Stories and how that fits into what you do uh, on on your website and what you do with your coaching? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as a kid, I was very, very chatty and talkative, and I loved to sit around with my mom and all the neighborhood friends of hers while they ate coffee cake and coffee, like a lot of people did in the 80s. And <laughs> I would talk a lot. And I always had a lot of friends in the neighborhood, but I, I found it more fun to create noises with my mouth and then record them on a tape cassette. And then I would take another tape player. I would play the first noises and add another layer. So, and that was just stuff I did as a kid. And I was interested. I always loved albums and I'm a huge music fan and I loved liner notes and reading through albums and who the artist dedicated their album to. And, and I used to make up fake cassette tape tapes, <laughs> like the actual cassette insert with my own fake band name and fake playlist songs. Cause I loved all that stuff. And uh, when I became a life coach in 2010, um, I would coach people. And once in a while I would just, when they were stuck in a place, I would use a metaphor or just tell them a story about something totally different, like about a squirrel or about a dog or about a cloud. And I would just tell them a story of something that they went through. And then I would ask the, the, the client of mine, you know, what advice would you give this cloud or what would you do if you were them? And it took the coaching on a different direction. And then in 2012, when I got really into meditation and after being bogged down with mono for, um, it was nine months, but it forced my my body to sit still. So it forced my mind to sit still because I was just tired all the time. And it was in that moment, all of a sudden I woke up in the middle of the night in 2012 and a story idea was sitting out in front of me, literally floating out there. And I wrote that down. And then after that, when I started doing meditation and consistently leaving gaps in my mind due to the meditation, it doesn't mean the stories would come in while I meditated, but since I was leaving those gaps, I'd be running and all of a sudden a full idea of a story would pop in. I'm like, oh my gosh, do I run to the neighbor's house and ask for a pen? Like, I need to remember this. And then they started flooding in. And now I'm about three months away from my fourth uh, storytelling album from being mixed and mastered and completed. Um, and there'll probably be a, it's a series of seven or eight stories called The Secrets of a Life Coach, where I take experiences, um, issues, trends, things that people go through or, or more the ways that people get in their own way. And I turn them into stories as not a how to, but more like a, here's a, an additional avenue with a character going through something similar to you. And it's just been an, an adventure ever since, let me tell you. It's so unique, Mike. Like there's, I don't, like I've, I've, I've been able to speak to a lot of amazing creative authors, and musicians and stuff. You're blending two worlds together. It feels like you're, you're in a theater mm. um, and the movie's on, but the screen is blank physically, but mentally you're right there as you take us through these. And I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. I started out the same way doing my little recordings and, and do, making mixed things. I pretend I was a radio guy and I would queue up songs and intro and outro songs. And this was like a long time ago. I'm really yeah. old. But <laughs> first of all, I got to find out what is the what is the band name that you had back in the day? What was your fake band name? The fake band name was Demons. Ooh. And and uh, I got a friend of mine on board, like we we're going to start a band together. We don't sing. We don't play instruments. We weren't <laughs> good. We didn't do anything other than made up fake song names. And I just made cassette tape covers. But uh, it shows that there were some dark sides to my childhood, apparently, with the name Demons. Hmm. But, yeah. You go. See, yeah. So you could be famous for that, but <laughs> you picked another. The, the world had a, a different thing for you, right? A different plan. Um, totally good. Yep. So, so Mike, which what, what was your very first audio? story that you recorded 
Yeah, the first story I recorded, uh, the first story I actually wrote was called Tiny Bugs. Okay. And um, it was the first story that came into my mind because as a, as a life coach, I used to want to tell people like, if I give a prescription, like telling them like, I, I wanted to do unauthorized things that are unconventional things of yeah. like, I just want to tell this person, like, you're going to die in one year. Like you're going to die in one year. And what are you going to do now? Not imagine you're going to die in one year. Like, I wish I could tell people like, and then go back after that year, after they've, you know, took inventory of their lives and worked on their lives and mended relationships and healed themselves. Like, yeah, you're never going to die. You were just slowly dying uh, from the other things you were trying to control or run away from or stay away from or that were making you sick or disconnected from other people. And now you're fully living. And so I wrote my first story about that called Tiny Bugs. And then they just, uh, like I said, they just kept pouring in, but that was exciting. And I, I, I wanted the, it's the first story typically that I play for an audience if I'm speaking or um, that I'll send to people because it's my first story, but it's also a kind of a quieter introduction to the whole series, which sometimes they get loud and very cinematic and other times there's quieter ones like tiny bugs, but that was the first one. Well, okay. Um, so, okay. It's so much to talk about. Uh, <laughs> how, do you, when you, when these ideas come to you for this, for the, the stories, are they fully formed? Are they just the basics and you have to fill in the gaps? I'm interested in that creative process as well. Yeah, I love your questions. Um, so typically, like once in a while, I'll get lucky and something's fully formed. It, it's probably maybe 10% of the time where a full story will pop in. Most of the time, I'll have the idea of a story. And then I've got notes all over my phone in two different emails so I don't lose them and copy and pasting. It's my own little organizational <laughs> mess, but it works. And um, and if I sit down and start writing out a story and it's not there yet, I just leave it alone and I let it sit there. And then whatever I'm doing, if I'm thinking about that story, or it's kind of on my mind. Um, eventually it'll just pop in the full thing and then I'll add in the middle pieces and the colorful dialogue and things like that. And then, um, create it. And once in a while I, I will actually hear a piece of music. There's about nine to 12 different musicians I work with on a regular basis that now they come to me with some music, like, could you do anything with this? And once in a while, that music will prompt like, ooh, this is very ethereal. So if I have a story that feels very, you know, like the universe and the clouds that I'm going to use that particular music. Um, and I've heard music where I'm like, I know I need this music. I have no idea what for. Um, I've done this with musicians too. Like, I'm going to need a saxophone player because I want all the stories to sound different. I'm going to get your number. You might not believe me, but I will call you. And then um, on my second album, I called a guy four years after I met him one time. I was like, I don't know if you remember me, but <laughs> I reintroduced myself, invited him in the studio, and I just hummed out and had him picture, um, you know, what the feeling that I wanted him to have. Like, I think it was like, picture your, you playing the saxophone at your mother's funeral. And like, just close your eyes and start with this note. And I would hum out like a C note. And I had him blowing that saxophone for 45 minutes until I knew like we had enough material for the three to four minutes that we use in four. But yeah, so it's, it's all different, but they, they come fully formed when I let them, when I, it doesn't really work for me when I just sit down, like, all right, I need three more stories for this album. Like, what do I want the concepts to be? The idea pops in, I collect it. And if it grows great, if it doesn't, um, like most, most don't, I have so many notes that just sit out there. And maybe I'll use them for something someday. But um, when they do, it just feels like magic, Dave. It feels like a part of me came together and uh, collects. And it's just like, okay, I feel more whole than uh, before the story wrote. So, yeah. So I have to ask, which which story features the saxophone? Mm, it's a story called Opposites Day on the second album. Opposites and okay. yeah, yeah. Kind of a, it's, it's a little bit haunting about how as kids we played things like opposites day and kiss or kill and hide and seek when these adults realize like I actually still play these as an adult when I'm in front of other people Ooh. and when they're realizing that this creepy saxophone comes in as they're looking taking an inventory of their life and looking at their life of like <laughs> am I still playing this so yeah it's wow. yeah it's one of my favorite stories on that album 
So, so Mike, do you have like 24 hours to record? Because like, let's just keep talking. I love this. This is <laughs> so, it's so amazing. I, again, I'm, I can't wait for the people listening to the podcast. You have to stick around and listen. We're going to give you a, a, a sample because, and it's not just a crumb, it's the whole cookie, but um excited to be able to share this with everyone today. Um, Mike, what I've seen some re- from reviews on your website from people, some comments coming back. Uh, anything really stand out, maybe more recent that somebody reached out to you and shared how these stories or a, or a particular story impacted them on a really personal level? Yeah, I think one of my favorite things to hear and again, it makes me feel like I'm doing my job right, is when someone says, they'll ask me like, is this story about me? And I flat out tell them like, yes. I mean, if you're connected to it, you're going through that in your life, you're feeling something from that, it's absolutely about you. And it's about me. I don't write about things that I just coach people on and um, will take their stories and turn them into something that sounds like self-help. I have felt these things in my life. I've worked through these things in my life. And another great one, Dave, is when people uh, tell me, you know, it was interesting. Like I played this for my kids or I played this, my husband, and I sat and listened to a story. And we had a great conversation about this. And I'm of the belief, if you listen to your by yourself, that you'll have your own self conversation going um, probably after the story because you're in it. And then you're looking at your life from the story but I, I really, really love to hear when people have played them with someone else and listened to them. And then it just, they unpack or open up a dialogue about it, not because it's the story, but because they're, it's helping their life and it's helping them communicate differently or opening something up that maybe wasn't open before to make their relationship better with using the stories as an example. Okay. Amazing. The one thing I was reading on your website too, Mike, on uh, Mike, jamesnow.com is uh, you do mention that a portion of the sales goes towards suicide prevention. Yes. And um, that made me pause for a moment. You don't see that very often. Yep. Um, Can you give us some insight into why that's important to you to donate in that way? Yeah, it's super important to me because when I was 20 years old, I was horribly depressed I was um, heavily into uh, drugs and going to raves and and drinking my weekends away. And um, when my dad and his wife uh, went on their honeymoon, a bunch of neighbors brought over, you know, wine and celebratory alcohol. And I drank a bunch of it. And I was on the phone with one of my friends and they were like, let me come over. You sound different. And as I was talking to him, I was cutting my wrist and I still have a little scar. I wasn't trying to commit suicide, but I was just seeing how much it would hurt if I did have to go that route. And then for another 10 years after that, whether I looked at it as suicide or not, the amount of like I ate pain medication uh, for three or four years. And like there's three times I woke up like you should be dead. And maybe not an intentional suicide, but I was killing my life away. And it's the one subject that I... It just kills me, uh, no pun intended, and that's not even mm, yeah, funny yeah, pun yeah, anyway, yeah. but it, like it, I feel that I, yeah. for someone to believe that they have no value, no worth, nothing left to learn about or grow into or expand um, over is that, that hurts me because I was that person before. So it's important to, I, you know, I don't believe I don't, it, this is not Mike sitting, creating these stories and then being nice and giving money away life created me a certain way. I'm lucky enough to get through the things I got through to find what I'm supposed to do, be patient enough and trust enough for the resources to come to me, meaning musicians, a recording studio, all the things that seemed insurmountable when I first started, um, that it's my way of giving back as well to people who might be going through those things. It's amazing. So Mike, um, I worked for a property company here in the area where we live and um, we had re- te- tenants renting apartments and there was one gentleman that I would see, you know, every week, once or twice a week and you know, a single guy lived by himself, really nice guy, pretty quiet, didn't really talk much to anybody, kept to himself. And this one day in particular, he was locked out of his apartment, came up to me and he's like, hey, Dave, uh, 
he was really happy and like super happy. Like we've had, I spoke to him more on that interaction than I've ever spoken to before. And uh, I was just a worker in the building. I really didn't uh, have a lot of time to chat, but he came up. He's like, Dave, I just got locked out of my apartment. Can I really let, let me in? I would really appreciate that. I had a key. And uh, he's like, you have a great day, Dave. And he was just like, I'm like, wow, you're just having like this great day. He's like, yeah, everything's awesome. And then two days later, I had to do a, an apartment check because he was leaving and moving out. And I was the one that found him. Oh, and yeah, uh, it completely changed my life in that moment. So when I see this on your website, a thank you. Um, but I was the one that had to speak with his family and negotiate through all of that. And I was exhausted. Yeah. And totally unprepared and didn't know what to do in that situation. Wow. And to see that somebody is dedicating resources to people who need them. Gosh, I wish. I wish he could have had a chance to chat with you or listen to some of this because the outcome might've been quite different. Yeah. Um, but thank you for doing that. So that's why I brought it up just because it means a lot to me personally, when somebody is, is interested in donating and giving back in this way. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. You're welcome. And thanks for sharing your story. And I, um, my heart hurts for that gentleman that, felt that that was his only option, of course, for his family and for you that had to see that and begin the process of picking up the pieces, whatever that next step was. And yeah, I had a, um, there was one day I went to, it was on uh, Mother's Day of all days. I just went up on a Sunday to pick up Subway sandwiches. I try to eat something a little bit healthier at the end of the weekend so I could start my week off and eat healthy. Um, Fridays and Saturday nights are a total different story. But um <laughs> It's like burgers and Chinese food and ranch dressing over everything. But come on, yeah. Yeah. And when I was in line, I was just buying food and then I just had this feeling like, oh, buy, buy food for this woman that's that's right behind you. So I was like, yeah, they're like, anything else for you today? I'm like, I'm gonna get hers too. And she, of course, is like, no, 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 that's okay. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah, I want to. Happy Mother's Day. Are you a mom? And then she burst out crying. And then I just said, are you okay? And she goes, I am a mom. The fact that you're buying this for me on the day, I'm actually bringing this sandwich up to my 15 year old son who's in the hospital right now. He, he attempted to commit, he attempted suicide last night. And it gives me chills as I'm saying it right now, because I don't know where that message came from. I'm just, I mm -hmm. do the work to be open enough to receive it. So again, it's not a, look what I did. You know, yeah. it's just a Subway sandwich, but at that right time, it's just like, and I just asked her like, you could say, no, can I give you a hug? And so I'm hugging this woman and this cashier's like, why do anything or just bring you up? And, but it was, it's those things that are, that's like real life looking at you, the, the hard parts of life, but also the, the crazy delicate, super, super sensitive pieces that uh, we miss so much by moving fast and, and running around pretending we need to do all these things we don't. And that's what I really appreciate talking to you, Mike, and listening to what you're doing is you seem so open to being led and responding to opportunities that present themselves. So for those of us who aren't as open or aren't quite as aware of that, and life passes us by and we're an autopilot, what's your advice, Mike? How do we, how do we become more aware and open to that situation, to being outside of our, our own mind and accepting and embracing others and bringing them in and being that person in line that needed yeah. to be there. So this isn't why I'm not here to promote these stories, but these are ways and examples. Each story has got a, a different way to approach life situations, things like that. So I will say that these help with those avenues. Um, but it all comes down to control. Dave, I believe is that, you know, we come into that in this world as a little baby fresh and curious. And when we, we cry, when we need something, um, we start to roll over, we start to crawl, all of it's natural. And somewhere in childhood, all the way through adulthood, we 
are taught to control things. You know, don't cry. People don't show these emotions. We're only polite here. You have to, these are your obligations. Family is your family. Like we, we pretend that all these rules are set in place, place for us. Um, we have to, you know, keep igniting and, and keep, keep those alive when it's, it's not true. And if, you know, this isn't a how to, but if we look at our minds, like, what am I trying to control here? What am I, we take these little things or problems, issues, people, we put them in categories in our mind and pretend that's reality versus like, I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing today. And yes, this was that person yesterday, but that might not be them today. Mm. And like, like kind of minding your own business and getting curious about people. And you'll be surprised at how often you're, we're wrong about things. So I, I, if there's a way we could drop the control and, and a lot of that is getting to silence, like literally sitting with yourself and giving yourself a chunk of silence that you'll see the control come up your mind. Like, I don't want to sit here. Like, but here you're here. Yeah. Where else do you have to go? Yeah. And that's the way you get to learn and know about yourself more. It's not an easy process. It took me a long time to, you know, not wiggle and vibrate in that yeah. meditation space, but um, yeah, we're all just running around trying to control the things we can to be comfortable when we got to get uncomfortable to feel the good things and allow them to show you what's actually for you versus you pretending, you know, what's best for you. Excellent. Very well said. Thank you, Mike. So we want to share, um, an, an episode with everyone today. Thank you for being kind and generous to allow us to do this, Mike. We're going to share just, um, I love that it's just one word and it's so simple, but listening to it myself, I just, there's so much in there and I love every part of it. I got to tell you, I just so much to talk about, but can you introduce just to us? We're going to play it after you introduce, introduce it to us. And then we're going to come back after and just kind of close off and just talk a little bit more about that. But can you just kind of cue us up to what just is about maybe the inspiration behind it? And then we're going to play it in a few minutes. Absolutely. So just is a story where uh, someone very close to me was playing some piano music one day. And that was one of those examples where I said, uh, this is beautiful. Do you have words to the song? And uh, he said, no. And I just said, can I, I need that someday. I really want that someday. And then when this story came to be, I knew that that was the music. It was just delicate enough to be about the story is about a snowflake who's absolutely terrified to leave the home of the clouds, his comfort, his safety, his control. And the clouds got amazing advice that the snowflake learns, um, and, well, remembers along the way on its journey when it, you know, it's a snowflake. When it starts to melt, it's absolutely terrified because things are changing. And it remembers the clouds advice, which is in the story. And you see what kind of life that snowflake has. I hope you're ready, everyone, because it's coming. This is uh, just uh, an audible story for you from Mike James from MikeJamesNow.com. Please enjoy this. Um, take a moment and uh, just soak this in a little bit. This is just on living the next chapter. Just. The snowflake crept to the edge of the cloud and looked down at all the billions of other snowflakes falling around and away from him, disappearing into the wide, open white far below. Do you remember everything I told you, Flurry? The cloud solidified while sanding and wiping the nerves from the snowflake's perfectly cut edges until they gleamed. Yes, Flurry's voice shook, his eyes glued to the edge. Just tell me one last time, the cloud shined his glassy lines. I'm cut perfectly, Flurry nodded to himself. Yes. And, most importantly, no matter what happens or when, just let go. A very full life will happen for you the way it's supposed to happen. Because of the way you are perfectly and uniquely cut, the cloud repeated a lesson. Flurry filled in the end. And it's all fair and just. Well, you will have to find that out. Are you ready? The cloud's voice pushed excitement into the snowflake. Ready, he trembled eagerly. Let go! 
Cloud's voice drifted up and away as the snowflake dropped into the big white empty. Yee! And off he went. Down, down, down he fell. Or flew. Sometimes he went at an angle. Sometimes he torpedoed straight down. Sometimes he would float. And sometimes he would cartwheel sideways like a Ferris wheel spun off its tracks and launched into the sky. The entire journey was quite a ride. Since the wind had died down, Flurry was in a floating phase when he noticed the ground appearing through the white like a long, dark ghost. His little snowflake heart started pounding. Ba-boom. 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 He noticed the top of a large tree, and since Flurry was cut a certain way, he moved his body just a little bit so the wind caught him differently, and he landed on a branch at the very top. Woo! He was safe. That big, wide ground looked overwhelming and so far from home. He looked over and saw another snowflake resting on a leaf at the top as well. Are you going to go down there? Flurry asked the other snowflake. Only if the wind makes me. Otherwise... I'm staying right up here where it's safe, he answered confidently. And you don't think it's safe down there? The other snowflake laughed. Listen, if I'm up here, I know exactly what to expect. Flurry knew he could too. He contemplated for a moment on that high up, safe branch that he stuck his wet flake self to the side of. And then he thought of the cloud. Just let go, the cloud's voice rang in his head. I'm cut perfectly for this, Flurry nodded to himself again that day. He sighed, closed his eyes tightly, let go. Down, down, down he went, floating like a piece of winter cotton on a still day and floating where the wind wanted him to go. Flurry landed on top of a dry, frozen, cracked flower wilted from the season. He made it to the ground. His little body beamed a diamond snowflake sparkle on the days the winter sun peaked around the clouds. He glistened with pride and aliveness. I did it! A few months later, when the sun felt closer and a bit more repetitive, and bird noises and dripping seemed to be the main acoustics, Flurry could feel a change coming. He felt it through his body. The sun was beaming through him, and he was afraid to melt with the warm change. I don't know what's happening, his terror cried out. And then he thought of the cloud and what they had worked on. He took a deep breath and reminded himself, Just let go. I'm cut perfectly for this. He felt the change in his body. It was tiring. It hurt. He grew sad that everything would change again. Still, he let go. He slowly melted into a drop, slid all the way down the green stem of the flower. He lightly dampened a tiny drop of dirt where the flower came out of the ground and melted underneath, clinging to root. Because his wet body nourished the root, He became part of it. He was the root of a flower now. He was something completely new. As spring melted into warm summer, the heat helped the roots grasp a handful of dirt for support as the stem of the flower tightened, straightened, and stood tall. I don't know what's happening, Flurry cried out, feeling change pushing him to leave the security of the dirt and poke through the horizon. Just let go. I'm cut perfectly for this. It was tiring. It hurt. He grew sad that everything would change again. Still, he let go. And then he pushed through the stem and became the bright orange top of the flower. Later on that summer, a soft brown rabbit hopped on over curiously. He sniffed the top of the flower. 
When the rabbit opened its little mouth and started nibbling at Flurry the flower, he at first panicked, then let go. Cut perfectly, he reminded himself through tiring, hurt, and sadness of another change. He became a rabbit, though. Life was exciting and scary, exhilarating and hard. A constancy of letting go for new. Yet with each change of new, he became stronger. He had a full life as a rabbit and just let go when eaten by a fox. So he became a fox. He had a full life as a fox and just let go when eaten by an eagle. So he became an eagle. While living his full life as the eagle, and when the eagle relieved itself, Flurry just let go and plopped into a bird bath. So he became water. And he had a full life as water, and just let go when condensation happened. And he was pulled up, up high into the sky, and became an ever-changing cloud forever. From sky to dirt, to ground to flight, life was up, down, all around. Sure, it was painful at times, and exciting, and overwhelming. And that's when he remembered to just let go, to grow and expand into something bigger. He only got tired when he held on too tight. He only hurt when he resisted. He only got sad when he didn't melt into what he should be. So many things to be in this world. Did he learn to love expanding into new things and new experiences? And the things he saw? Yes. Wow. When he was the flower's twisting roots, he watched the respectable push and forward slithers of the blind worm in the pitch dark on a thirsty quest for moisture. When he was a vibrant, popping flower, watched the lonely hard work of a buzzing furry bee as it pollinated in driven solitude to impress a queen far off somewhere. And when he was a hook-beaked eagle with wind in his ears while soaring high above the treetops, he watched the fiery golden sun as it sank itself to sleep under the covers of the horizon into that painted heaven. What an immaculate journey in just letting go. There are billions of snowflakes out there all cut completely different. For some reason in this life, letting go is the hard part. Later on in life, Flurry learned that his friend, the other snowflake that he met at the top of the tree when he first started his journey, had melted away early in life. Other snowflakes melted so much sooner than the ones that were grounded. Most snowflakes aimed for the lakes and oceans where they could float safely through life. Some pelted and drove hard through life. Some let go and descended softly. Some hit a warm windshield early, and some were smeared away by wipers. Letting go took adjustment, which justified life justice. Flurry was a rolling snowball collecting life along the way, making himself bigger and bigger. There are billions of snowflakes each season and generation, all cut completely different. Not one is the same. Flurry knew that no matter what happened in life or when, to just let go. And then a very full life happened for him the way it was supposed to happen because of the way he was perfectly and uniquely cut. He learned that you freeze yourself when you hold on too tight because everything someday thaws. So everything may not be fair, but it is just. All right, everybody. So that was just. Uh, We have Mike here from MikeJamesNow.com. Mike, just is so beautifully done i love i love how you tell the story as well inflection in your voice you're you're taking us somewhere right have you had any training at all in this at all is this just naturally coming to you from your cassette days back in the day uh (laughs) i've uh done a little studying since the cassette days i mean i was uh 
anywhere between, I'll be honest, six and I was probably doing it still at 15, but um, I worked with a, a vocal coach for just a couple months. He was supposed to be an agent to get me in touch with people who might be interested in the albums. And then he just gave me one piece of advice about inflection and how to not be flat. And then every, if I'm recording on a Saturday, I read the each, if I'm recording three stories on a Saturday, I'll read all three stories every single day of the week and really figuring out where the words that need a punch to it, what needs to be louder, where I need to step back and be soft. And, um, but that's pretty much the only training. And I, I, I just, I love storytelling and I, it's, it's vital to like, to really, um, it's a presentation. It's a, it's a, it's a performance versus just reading to, uh, you know, reading a story, but thank you for saying that. I, I don't like my own voice and, um, oh gosh, Mike, it's great. So come oh. on, Leia is so well done. Thank and you. Uh, yeah, it is. It's beautiful. And like, again, we go back to the message behind this. You're not just reading a story to us. It's a living, breathing thing that we're participating in and the effects on a listener beautiful like just it's just i i haven't again i have never met somebody that does what you do i'm sure they're out there but my gosh they're not mike james like it's it's just really really inspiring thank to you talk to you about it can you share us a little bit more about just um now that we've heard it is there anything yeah. that you want is there, is there an overarching message that you just want to underline as well yeah, when we had talked about, you know, you know, dropping the illusion of control, if that snowflake had control, like the like its friend that it met in the tree, like I'm staying up here where it's safe. And but just remembered the advice from home, where it came from, that when it, you know, when it decided to let itself melt and just let go, which is the main theme of the story, it, you know, dropped and fed a plant and it became a plant. When the plant was eight, it became that animal. And then it, it life is very cyclical. And in the end, when um, it became some poop in a, in a, a bird bath, yep. uh, that water evaporated and it returned to home. But man, did that have a full life while the billions of snowflakes out there uh, aim for the safety of the lakes and the oceans to be with all the other ones or land on a warm windshield. And um, I caught that one in Canada. We have a lot of warm windshields in the, in the winter. <laughs> So that was, that was, that made me smile when I heard you say that. No, it was good. I'm in Minnesota too. So I, yeah, I get it. Defrost, defrost. Defrost, defrost. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. So Mike, can you give us a little sneak peek? Do you have a, do you have one in on, on the simmer pot right now that's coming that you can share just slightly about a new story? Uh, yes. So I just recorded three stories um, two weeks ago. And right now one's being worked on. It's called pretend intend. And it's the last story on my fourth album uh, called little cracks of light. So the fourth album's uh, shorter stories that are a little moment that characters from the first three stories, when they had a little moment of insight. And this particular story is um, about like, let's pretend we have to have it all figured out. Let's pretend that um, life isn't or being a human being isn't all just a bunch of um, compliance of behaviors. So it's kind of, it's irony of like, actually it's not. And if we intend to pretend that we can change the rhythm of our days and then the music and the rhythm just takes off in a different direction. So that's, what's being worked on now. And I've been, I've had this piece of music for I think two years now, and I finally get to put it to its use and it's, it's mind blowingly beautiful and creative and ethereal and, Super grateful to the musician who created it. Jeez, Mike, I need like, I need an hour inside your head, how you organize <laughs> all this and how you can pull from uh, a chance meeting with one person one time and four years ago and bring them in. And I got this going on and this going, you're just pulling from so many amazing resources and it's a storage house. I know you're using technology and stuff to help you, but all of this stuff is just happening inside of your, your creative mind and sharing it with people is is the is the the, the bonus for us mm -hmm. that we get a chance Thank to you. get an inside look and listen to this and and help us to find that space in our life. I really appreciate that. Really, really good. Can you tell us a little bit before we close off about your coaching and about your website? 
what is it like to work with you and how people can find you? Yeah, absolutely. So you could find me at uh, mikejamesnow.com. And what that is, is basically a store for a few things. So the albums are put out there. You could buy them for a discount, um, all three as a package, soon to be four, or buy individual albums. And there's a few sample stories out there if people want to check those out. If they just want to, a lot of people like to listen when they're cooking or driving or cleaning or like I said, sitting with their husband at a kitchen table and playing a story. Uh, so those are out there. And then it also offers um, kind of what my coaching entails, which are very deep conversations. Um, I like to get to the root cause of things versus just, um, I'm not a positive mindset coach. I don't like the word positive. I, I like the word transparency. And um, hmm. it could be some tough moments on tough calls of things that you've never looked at before, but when we do the healing that happens and the way life can change for you, life is always the same, but the way you could change to meet life actually um, ends up being miraculous. So they're deep uh, root based um, causes coaching and, and clearing out emotions that get in the way too. And by that, letting people feel through emotions they're avoiding and things like that. And then I've just been studying breath work um, which has been interesting because that's a incredible healing modality that I do this breath work exercise um, every weekday for 15 minutes. And it's just number one, you feel incredible. And then it reduces stress, anxiety, depression, not to mention it, it reduces inflammation in your body, which their scientists are now looking at how it's um, reversing things like cancer, diabetes, MS, fibromyalgia, all these things. So just another, another tool that I help people with too. So it's, it's, it's fun. Amazing. Mike, thank you so much for being part of the podcast. Thank you for sharing just with us. That was very kind and gracious of you to do so. Um, Thank you for sharing your personal story with us, but also thank you for sharing these audible stories with us as well. Um, You're a great storyteller, uh, a great leader. And um, I, I really appreciate the fact that you have time for us today and that we can have this conversation. And I hope that many people find their way to your website and to connect with you because you have so much to offer. Thank you. Oh, that means a lot. Thank you so much. These conversations are wonderful and this was great. Thank you. Excellent, everybody. So please go check out uh, MikeJamesNow.com and uh, take a look at all the great things. And then you go back and replay this episode and definitely listen to just over and over and over. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Hey guys, thank you for listening to the podcast. Jump over to livingthenextchapter.com, our website, and you will see a spot where you can leave a voice message. We'd love to hear your feedback. We're trying to make it as easy as possible to hear from you. So if you want your voice on this podcast, yes, that's possible. Go to livingthenextchapter.com, click the little icon, little microphone icon, leave a voice message. We'll insert your message into the podcast. Tell us where you're listening from. Uh, Tell us your favorite guest. Maybe there's a guest we should have on the podcast. Maybe you should be our next guest. Leave us a message. Livingthenextchapter.com Again, thank you so much for listening. Please share this podcast episode with one person. That's all we're asking. Meet you over there at livingthenextchapter.com Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Love to hear from you. Till the next episode. It's coming up right away. Be sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you for being part of Living the Next Chapter. Thank you for supporting our guests. Have a great day.